nothing is impossible with God, right? Hmm. Are you sure about that? Here are five things God cannot do. Coming up here on Pursuing the Savior. What is going on? My name is Archie and welcome to Pursuing the Savior. I'm a pastor and a writer and I have a passion for helping people understand the Bible and find their way back to God. And that's what this channel is all about. In this week's episode, we're going to talk about five things God cannot and will not do. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing and hit that little notification bell so you won't miss a thing. And if you're watching on Facebook, don't forget to like or follow our official Facebook page, Pursuing the Savior. Let's get started. To get us started with our study in this episode, let's read Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. But Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. This is one of the most favorite and well-quoted Bible verses, and uh, not without reason. Besides, who wouldn't want to believe in a God who can do all things, right? But in this episode, I intend to give some clarity on the term, nothing is impossible with God. Sa bahaging ito ng Book of Matthew ay makikita natin ang isang rich, young ruler na lumapit sa Panginoong Heso Kristo nagtatanong tungkol sa pagkakaroon ng buhay na walang hanggan. So Jesus answers him at sinabi ng Panginoong Jesus na kailangan niyang sundin yung mga utos na nakasaad doon sa Old Testament. Particular, anim doon sa Ten Commandments. At ang claim ng lalaki ay nasunod na daw niya ang lahat ng mga ito. So Jesus challenges him na ibenta niya ang lahat ng kanyang mga ari-arian at pagkatapos ay ipamigay ito sa mga mahihirap at sumunod siya sa Panginoong Jesus. Unfortunately, ay nalungkot itong lalaking ito na nagpapakita na marami siyang kayamanan at nalulungkot siya dahil ayaw niyang mawala ang kanyang mga yaman. Ito naman ang nagbunsod sa Panginoon para sabihan yung kanyang mga disipulo na napakahira para sa isang mayamang tao na makapunta sa langit, hindi dahil mayaman sila, kundi dahil divided yung kanilang atensyon. Ang sabi pa nga ng Panginoong Yesus ay mas madaling makapasok yung kamelyo doon sa butas ng karayom kesa sa isang mayamang tao na nagnanais pumasok sa kaharian ng Diyos. Ang sinabi ng Panginoong Yesus ay nagdulot ng pagkabahala sa mga disipulo kaya nagtaka sila. Mm, kung yung mayamang lalaking yon ay hindi papasa sa langit, eh sino na? Now, to encourage the troubled disciples, Jesus quoted verse 26 na kakabasa lang natin. Now, na naiintindihan na natin, yung background ng verse na ito ay ngayon mapapansin natin na hindi tama yung assumption ng napakarami mga kristyano na ang verse na ito ay pwedeng i-apply sa lahat ng mga pagkakataon at mga sitwasyon. May it be in terms of their personal interest, desire for healing, o di naman kaya yung pagnanais na makaranas ng isang supernatural na experience. Mga minamahal, di ko po sinasabi na hindi kayang gawin ng Panginoon ng mga bagay na ito. Of course He can, only if He wants to. Nothing can stop God from doing whatever He wants. He is sovereign after all. But the thing is, we cannot quote a verse out of context and expect God to do what we want Him to do. That would be called manipulation. Hindi pwedeng manipulahin ang Panginoon kahit gamitin pa natin yung salita niya. Just because we see chapter and verse divisions in the Bible ay hindi ipig sabihin nun na malaya na tayong interpret natin ang verse on its own. Kailangan pa rin natin isa alang-alang yung mga sinasabi doon sa mga surrounding verses at i-compare yan sa rest of the Bible. Because when it comes to biblical interpretation, context is still king. With that in mind, let me give you five things God cannot do. Number one, God cannot lie. Let's read Hebrews chapter 6 verse 18. So that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled for refuge might have strong encouragement 
to hold fast to the hope set before us. The passage from this verse is taken, talks about God being trustworthy in the sense that pwedeng pagkatiwalaan ang kanyang mga salita at mga pangako. Because God is serious, He makes sure that everything He says, He does. He has proven Himself to be trustworthy by fulfilling His promises to Abraham with a confirmation via an oath. Therefore, our God is a promise-keeping God and we can depend on His Word. Again, we are assured that He does whatever He says because God never lies. Number two, God cannot be pleased without faith. Let's read Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who seek Him. Taken from the famous faith chapter, ang bahaging ito ng Biblia ay tumatalakay doon sa necessity of faith o yung pangangailangan ng pananampalataya kung yan naman ay tungkol sa mga bagay na ating inaasahan o di naman kaya para maunawaan natin ang katotohanan na ang Panginoon ay ang may likha ng lahat. Also, faith is necessary para tanggapin ng Panginoon ang ating mga papuri at pagsamba. What this means is that God will not reveal Himself to anyone who has no faith. At hindi rin niya tatanggapin ang papuri ng isang taong walang pananampalataya. So my friend, kung ikaw ay nananalangin para sa isang bagay pero wala kang pananampalataya, nakakalungkot mong sabihin pero hindi ka pakikinggan ng Panginoon. Because God cannot be pleased without faith. Number three, God cannot change His mind. Let's read 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 29. He who is the glory of Israel does not lie or change his mind, for he is not a human being, that he should change his mind. Ang chapter na ito ay tumatalakay doon sa katotohanan na nireject ng Panginoon si Saul dahil sa kanyang disobedience. God's decision is final at wala na makakapagpabago pa nung kanyang desisyon. Because God does not change His mind in, in the sense of uh, realizing that He made a mistake and there's a need for Him to correct His error. Again, hindi nagkakamali ang Panginoon. Therefore, ano man ang sinabi ng Panginoon, yun ay final na at hindi na yan mababago at walang tao ang pwedeng magpabago sa isip ng Panginoon gaano man siya kagaling magsalita. O manalangin, isa sa mga desisyon ng Panginoon na kailanman ay hindi na mababali ay ang desisyon niya na sa pamamagitan lang ng pananampalataya at sa pagsisisi ng mga pagkakasala, maliligtas ang isang tao. Yun lang ang nag-iisang standard na inestablish ng Panginoon para ang tao ay maligtas. Therefore, outside of repentance and faith, there is no way for any human being to be forgiven of their sins and given eternal life. Because God cannot change His mind. Number four, God cannot grow tired. Let's read Isaiah chapter 40 verse 28. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. As the sovereign God who made all things, God is full of power and strength. He is the source of strength, and therefore, His strength does not run out. Hindi siya nauubusan ng supply ng kalakasan at kapangyarihan. Kung papanong ang araw ay hindi nauubusan ng init at liwanag, gayon din naman ang Panginoon bilang creator of all things, bilang pinagkukunan ng kalakasan, limitless ang kanyang lakas at kapangyarihan. Therefore, it is impossible for Him to get tired. Number five, God cannot ignore a repentant sinner. Let's read Psalm chapter 51 verse 17. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God, you will not despise. This psalm is one of the penitential songs found in the book of Psalms written by King David after the prophet Nathan confronted David because of his adultery with Bathsheba and the murder of Uriah. Naintindihan ni David na hindi pwedeng bilhin yung kapayapaan, yung kagalakan, at dahil 
hindi pwedeng ma-bribe ang Panginoon. He knew better dahil kilala ng uh, Haring David ang Panginoong Diyos kasi he is the man after God's own heart. David realized that there was only one way for him to recover his joy in his ministry. And that was for him to come before the Lord in humility. Kailangan niyang i-confess yung kanyang mga kasalanan at pagsisihan ang mga ito. And true enough, God being faithful to His promises, He forgave David. Likewise, God will not turn a blind eye on anyone who is repentant, who is sorry, who is broken and sorrowful about his sins. Because God is compassionate and merciful. He is gracious. That's who He is. And He can't deny Himself. Therefore, kapag lalapit tayo sa Panginoon, sa pamamagitan ng pananampalataya, ng pagpapakumbaba, we are rest assured that He listens. Nakikinig ang Panginoon and He forgives our sins. Kung papanong hindi naman matitiis ng tatay ang kanyang anak na nakikita niyang sising-sise, yung anak sa kanyang ginawa ay gayon din naman ay hindi matitiis ng Diyos ang isang taong lalapit sa kanya ng buong pagpapakumbaba at pagsisisi. Tandaan natin mga minamahal, God forgives and restores and a repentant sinner He never ignores. So, are all things possible with God? Sure, pero nakita natin that in the Bible, there are at least five things God cannot do. And I hope nagdulot po ang video na ito ng kaliwanagan sa inyo, mga kapatid. And if you want more videos like this one, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow our official Facebook page. And with that, my friend, I'll see you on the next one.